And hello again from Fox News in Washington. They were in the spotlight for years, speaking to big crowds and tracked by reporters. But since their defeat four months ago, Mitt and Ann Romney have gone silent. That is, until now. This week, we flew to San Diego to sit down with the Romneys for their first interview since the campaign. We talked about why they lost, what they make of the mess here in Washington, and how they're dealing with a life they didn't expect to be leading now. Take me back to Election Day, November 6th. Is it true that you both thought going in you were going to win? Well, I for sure did. I think Mitt intellectually was thinking that it was possible we couldn't. He knew how close it was. But my heart and my whole soul was, we're, we're going to win. I was there. Yeah, I think uh, we were convinced that we would win. We saw that the polls were very close. But we knew that the energy and passion uh, was with our voters. And uh, my heart said we were going to win. A crucial swing state of Virginia, the Commonwealth, where the race is excruciatingly close. How As the returns started coming in and they were not what you expected, what were your thoughts? The exit polls came out first and suggested that it was going to be very close in Florida, and we thought we'd win solidly in Florida. So it was increasingly clear that this was going to be, uh, with a best-case scenario, a long night. When did you know you had lost the presidency? It was a slow recognition until ultimately when the Ohio numbers began coming in and they were disappointing. Uh, I, I said, look, this looks like we've lost. Wasn't certain. Some people said, oh, look, if this number here comes in, why well, you could win. But, you know, by 8 or 9 o'clock, it was pretty clear that we were not going to win. And, uh, and what was that moment like? Well, it's, uh, it's hard. It's, it's emotional. Uh, I mean, there was such passion in the people who were helping us. I just felt, you know, we've really let them down. You know, it was that crushing disappointment. Not for us. Our lives are going to be fine. It's for the country. Is it true you began to cry? I did, of course, yeah. Very disappointed. Cry for what? Cry, it not, again, it's not sorrow for, oh my gosh, you know, our life, or, you know, this, this dream. The dream was to make a difference. The dream was to serve. Then you called the president, mm -hmm. and he came downstairs, and you delivered your formal concession. I so wish that I had been able to fulfill your hopes to lead the country in a different direction, but the nation chose another leader, and so Ann and I join with you to earnestly pray for him and for this great nation. It was all the people who had helped that counted on us that came to my mind. As I got up to speak, and I look around that room, and I saw the people who were there, and I believed I could have made a difference for the people of this country. And you think, gosh, I, I just haven't been able to get the job done. And it was, uh, it was very hard. In a flash, it was all gone. Secret Service, the crowds, the intensity, the minute-by-minute -minute schedule, and suddenly, nothing. How tough is that? It's an adjustment. Um, you know, in, it's interesting. In our church, we're used to serving. And, you know, you can be in a very high position... Um, but you recognize you're serving, and then all of a sudden you're released, and you're, you're nobody. And, and we're used to that. It's like we came and stepped forward to serve. But um, the, the good news is, fortunately, we like each other. <laughs> <laughs> and we like being with each other. That's our life. I mean, our life is, is the life we have with each other and with five sons, five daughters-in-law, and 20 grandchildren. But That's our life. That's who we are. But it's isn't like, it tough when well, suddenly but, the Secret Service... Well, it's, it's different. But it's like, you know, riding on a roller coaster. We were on a roller coaster, exciting and thrilling, ups and downs, but the ride ends, and then you get off. And it's not like, oh, can't we be on a roller coaster the rest of our life? It's like, no, the ride's over. So let me ask you about the months from November till now. Uh, were there tears? Oh, for me, yeah. I, I, I cried. When you pour that much of your life and energy and passion into something, and you're disappointed by the outcome, it's very, it's sad, it's very hard. Governor, second guessing, anger, depression? No, you look back at the campaign and say, okay, what did the president do well? And you, you acknowledge that his campaign did a number of things very effectively. Of course, you rehearse all the mistakes that uh, you made, and I went through a number of my mistakes, I'm sure, and then you think about the things that were out of our control. But, uh, but you move on. I mean, I, I don't spend my life looking back. It's like, okay, what, what are we going to do next? Governor, we began to see random pictures of you uh, <laughs> pumping <laughs> your own gas with your hair messed up, 
uh, hugging Ann in the kitchen, hanging out with the kids at Disneyland. Did, did you have a plan, or were you just trying to get through the day? No, we were just living our life. Uh, and uh, obviously, people would see us in various places, either walking along the beach or, in this case, uh, getting gas for the car. And they'd take out their cell phones and take a picture. None of those were done by professional photographers, or I might have, you know, combed my hair <laughs> seeing them coming. But no, we're just living our life. Mrs. Romney, as we sit here right now, have you gotten over the defeat, or is that going to take more time? I think it takes time. I think I'm mostly, you know, the, the, the great Princess Bride line, mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly over it. Um, but not, not completely. It, you have um, moments where you, you know, go back and, and feel the sorrow of, of the loss. And um, so, yeah, I think we're not mostly dead yet. <laughs> a week after the election, Governor, you had a conference call with top donors in which you said that you blamed your defeat on the president giving away things. It's a proven political uh, 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 strategy, which is give a bunch of money from the government to a, to a group uh, and guess what? They'll vote for you. To some people, it sounded like the remark you made in your campaign about 47% of Americans looking for handouts. The president had the power of incumbency. Obamacare was very attractive, particularly those without health insurance. And, and they came out in large numbers to vote. So that was part of a successful campaign. But fairly or not, you know, a lot of Republican leaders roasted you for those remarks. Iowa Governor Branstad, my feeling is we need to turn the page. GOP strategist Ed Rogers, he, you, can exit the stage any time and no one will mourn. Did that hurt? Did you feel in a sense you were being pushed out of the party? I'm not going to second guess what other people have to say. Look, I don't look back. I look forward. You never like it. <laughs> and, um, and I never like it. And I, you know, I, I'm like a she lion when it comes to defending Mitt. And I know, I know his heart. I know his abilities. I know he would have been a fabulous president. And I mourn the fact that he's not there. And it would have been, um, it would have been much better for America, I believe, in my heart, that if, if he had been there right now. We're going to talk to your husband separately. You're going to have to just sit here for a minute. But I want to ask Mrs. Romney a few questions. Um, Oh, that's going to be that's going to be hard. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say nothing. Why do you think he lost? Um, I think they had a better ground game, and I think we were not aware. You know, we we certainly had the passion coming from our side, and I don't think we were we were as aware of the passion that was coming from the other side. I think we we were a little blindsided by that. Do you think that the two of you at all contributed to this image? which the other side certainly played up, that you were so wealthy that you were somehow out of touch with the concerns of the average American. And, you know, that's a, that's a reality that, you know, you can't change. I mean, we are who we are. Um, the thing that was frustrating to me is that people didn't really get to know Mitt for who he was. Well, I want to pick up on that because there were reports that you and your oldest son, Tag, were frustrated with the Romney campaign, that they didn't, quote, let Mitt be Mitt, that they didn't let him show his more open, compassionate side. True? Well, I, of, of course. I, it was partly, it's true, but it was not just the campaign's fault. I believe it was the media's fault as well, is that he was not giving, being given a fair shake, that people weren't allowed to really see him for who he was. All right. What about the media? <laughs> I'm happy to blame the media. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the media was in the tank for Barack Obama? <laughs> I think that it's any time you're running for office, you always think that you're being portrayed unfairly. And, you know, we, of course, on our side, believe that there's more bias um, in favor of the other side. I think that, you know, that's a pretty universal, universally felt um, opinion. What do you think of the campaign that Barack Obama ran? I think, obviously, it was a winning campaign. It, it worked. Do you think it was fair? No. In what way? Um, portrayal of my husband. Um, you know, he is an exceptional, wonderful person. <laughs> She's not biased at all. I'm not biased. <laughs> and, you know, and he, I mean, he really is a selfless person that really, truly cared about the American people. He truly cares about making a difference and about helping others. And for him to be portrayed in, an, in, in a very negative light, in, an, in another way, was, was very hard. He has enormous skill sets in dealing with difficult issues. And I totally believe 
at this moment, if Mitt were there in the office, that we would not be facing sequestration right now. So what is your life like now? What are you doing? How do you spend your days? Governor, you can, now you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> My turn again. Yes, again. Uh, we've renamed our foundation, the Romney Foundation for Children. We're going to help the very poorest kids in the world. We're going to help kids in this country with disease and great difficulty. And, and that's taking more and more of our time. We got a chance to spend more time with the grandkids. We just had twins born, as you know, and, and being with them was a, a thrill. I have to um, clear up a couple of rumors. Were you approached by Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> I was. <laughs> and did you consider it? I did consider it. I, lo I, w I love the show. And why aren't you going to be out there doing the Paso Doble? Uh, well, you know. <laughs> um, the press, do you know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have done it. And, and um, I am turning 64, and I started thinking about it. I'm like, I'm not really as flexible as I should be. <laughs> and now I, know, I understand Dorothy Hamill is been picked and I thought oh my gosh am I glad I didn't do that <laughs> I wouldn't want to compete against Dorothy did the Republican Party approach you about running for John Kerry's Senate seat no that's not true I I'm sure no they didn't approach me I don't think I think there was a, 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 a thought that oh wouldn't that be fun for for Ann to do that and I'm like did anyone want to consider how fun it would be for me to do that <laughs> not, not a chance not a chance I, I'm, I'm enjoying life. Tell us about the grandchildren and your involvement with them. We're with them constantly. It's our life. I think, I think Chloe can. I mean, it's virtually every day. We see the one grandchild or another every day. Every day. We, uh, uh, we took them to Disneyland. We took them snow skiing. Uh, and then uh, our son, uh, sons, Matt and Craig, live close to an open space area. We throw the ball for the dogs. Uh, we play sports with the kids. Uh, they like uh, kicking balls. Uh, hitting baseballs, there, uh, you know, we do the things that grandparents are expected to do with grandkids. Looking back and, uh, and, and now, how do you both feel about what you've been through and where you are now? I wish everyone could have just been in our pockets, gone with us, and seen what we had seen. And what you see when you see that are the heart of the American people. I leave, you know, discouraged by the outcome of the election, but also optimistic about America and because of the people that live here. It's an, and it's an amazing place. Governor? It was an exciting, thrilling experience. And uh, it didn't end the way we wanted it to, but the experience itself was magnificent. Were there tough days? Absolutely. Were there exhilarating days? Yeah, even more of them. And uh, so I kind of, one of the great life experiences, anybody would, would say, can you imagine anything more fantastic than being able to run for president of the United States? And I can think of one thing more expensive. <laughs> more <laughs> well, winning. Yes, yeah, winning. But, 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 the but two years, and we've done it twice, two years of really seeing the American people. It's a great, thrilling experience of a lifetime that we will obviously cherish uh, for, throughout our lifetime.